Hey guys, it's Alicia. This video is a what's for dinner on WW or Weight Watchers. My husband and I are on the green plan, but I will include the points for all three colors on these meals. Now, a couple of these meals were new to me this week, so it was kind of fun to try out a couple new recipes. I also made one of my fall favorite go-tos that I've been making for years. I will have links for everything down below or I will have the ingredients written out if I don't have a link for that particular recipe. So tonight I am gonna be making something that's kind of a twist on something I made before and that is gonna be Philly bombs. Now I have made cheeseburger bombs and taco bombs before using the uh, two ingredient pizza dough that I love. And so that's what this is gonna start off with. So I've got a large frying pan here and I'm gonna just dump in a green bell pepper that I've chopped up and a medium red onion that I've chopped up. So as I was saying before, I've done different versions of these bombs and I will link the videos to those down below if you wanna check those out. And I'll also link down below the two ingredient pizza dough that I use to make all of these. I'm gonna just add a little ground pepper to this. And I've got this on a uh, medium high heat. And I'm gonna just kinda saute these veggies in here a little bit, or until they get a little bit softened. But anyway, I absolutely love the two ingredient pizza dough. I love finding different ways to use it, and these bombs are one way. Like I said, I've never tried them in a Philly version before, but that sounds good, so that is what I'm gonna be trying tonight. So I'll be back once those veggies start to soften up. The onions and peppers have softened up pretty well, so now I'm gonna add some garlic in there. And then also, I'm gonna add in some beef that I've cut up. Now I was looking for roast beef and I could not find roast beef as in like deli sliced roast beef anywhere. Um, it was kind of weird. But anyway, so I ended up getting this stuff, this butt egg. That was the closest thing to roast beef I could find. So that's what I'm gonna use. Just two, uh, two ounce packages of that that I've cut up here. Preferably though, you wanna use roast beef. So I'm gonna just kind of stir this in here. And I'm gonna let this cook for another couple minutes until that garlic and that beef is starting to become fragrant. All right, I've let that cook for a couple minutes. Now I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons of this to it. And just kind of stir that in there. And at this point I have um, turned my oven on to preheat at 425. Okay, I've got that nice and mixed in there. I'm gonna turn off my heat and then I'm gonna remove this from the heat and just let it kind of sit while I continue working on the rest of this. Now, as this has been cooking, I have been mixing up my two ingredient pizza dough and so now I've got that ready to roll out. So I will take you over and show you that. Okay, so here I've got my dough that I was working on while I was doing the rest of that. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna just cut it into eight equal parts, or as close to that as I can get. I'm gonna take each part, and I'm going to roll it out. And I'm gonna use a roller, because it's easier. Sometimes I do this by hand, but it's easier to just get the roller out. So I'm gonna roll these out into rough circles, about like that. And then here, I've got some Velveeta slices and some provolone slices, so I'm gonna take one of those of each, stick it in the middle, and then I'm gonna take about a quarter cup of that meat and veggie mixture, put that on top of the cheese, and then I'm simply gonna pull up these edges 
and kind of pinch them together. Kind of like that. And now I'm gonna take these and stick them on my cookie sheet here that I've got parchment paper on. Just gonna lay them seam side down. Like that. So I'm gonna finish the rest of these and then I will be back. Okay, I've got these all done. And now instead of putting an egg wash on them like I typically do, I'm gonna just give them a little quick spray with this olive oil spray. And now I'm gonna bake these in my preheated oven at 425 for about 15 minutes. These have baked for 15 minutes. They are done and so now I will um, cut one open, show you what it looks like inside. Okay, here is a serving size of those, which is two of them. They are nine points on the green plan. I'll have to double check and see what they uh, come out on the uh, blue and purple plan. But I would assume probably pretty close to the same. Husband's gonna cut one open. Run around so I can see. That's what they look like inside. They smell good. Yeah, they're still a little hot. I'm gonna try one. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, it tastes like a Philly cheesesteak. It's got the the beef and the peppers and the onions and the cheese. I really like, what were the burger bombs before? We've done burger, we've done, um, or cheeseburger, and we've done a taco. Yeah, no, it was really good. Well, they smell good. Yeah. So. They're really hot. Something you would want again? Mm-hmm. Okay. So nine, nine points for those, which is a little high, but oh well. This one is another new one for me. Never made it, but it looked delicious, so I wanted to try it. And I will link the website where I got the recipe down below. Now, I am making a couple changes to this just because, um, but I will let you know what those are as I go along. But this is for pumpkin tortellini alfredo, or pumpkin alfredo tortellini, however you want to say it. So. I am going to be starting off with a large skillet here that I've got on medium high heat and to that I'm going to be adding 13 ounces of turkey polska kielbasa and one medium onion that I've chopped up. Now the recipe calls for a pound of a turkey sausage, I think it calls for a hot turkey sausage. I can't ever find that. so. I'm just using the turkey polska kielbasa. I love that stuff anyway, get it Aldi. So starting off with those two things and I'm going to basically just let this kind of cook in here until those onions start to soften. The turkey sausage is already pre-cooked so it doesn't need to be cooked, it just needs to be heated up. So I'm gonna let these two cook together, like I said, until that onion gets softened. All right, those onions have softened. So now I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons or so garlic to that. And I'm gonna let that cook in there for about a minute. All right, now I'm gonna add in a cup of fat-free chicken broth and a cup of pumpkin puree. And then I'm going to stir this all together until that pumpkin and chicken broth are kind of incorporated. Now I'm going to add in my spices, add a little fresh black ground pepper. Sage. 
some, I think this is pronounced marjoram, a quarter teaspoon of this, and then a quarter teaspoon of sage. And then I'm gonna just mix all that together. All right, now I'm gonna add a 15 ounce jar of creamy alfredo sauce. Now this is gonna be where one of my differences comes in with this recipe because she uses a light alfredo sauce and for the life of me, I could not find light alfredo sauce anywhere. So the points on this stuff are a little bit higher. And actually I'm gonna add a little bit of water just to the bottom of this jar and shake that up and throw that in there too. And now I'm gonna stir this all together. But anyway, as I was saying, I cannot find light Alfredo sauce anywhere, not even online. So I'm just gonna use that and it's gonna be slightly higher in points, but I'm also gonna be cutting points um, with my tortellini that I'm gonna be using because I'm only gonna be using nine ounces of that and the recipe calls for 20. So that is gonna cut it down significantly in points. In fact, um, a serving of this on her recipe is 10 and it's gonna be seven the way I do it per serving. So now that I've got that all mixed together, I'm gonna add in this tri-colored three cheese tortellini. Just got this at Aldi. And as I said, this is nine ounces, whereas the recipe calls for 20, but it's okay, it's still gonna be good. So I'm gonna dump that in there and I'm gonna just stir this in here and splatter some on myself. Get that all coated nicely and broken up. And then I'm gonna let this come to a simmer. I'm actually gonna put the lid on it and let it come to a simmer. And then when this comes to a simmer, I'm gonna just turn down the heat and let it kind of continue to cook for, says about eight minutes until that pasta is cooked. Okay, I let that simmer for just about four minutes, so about half the time of what the recipe said because that pasta is already, already cooked. So now I'm gonna add in this bag of spinach. It is eight ounces. I think the recipe calls for five, but I figure more is better. I'll just bulk it up a little bit more too. I'm gonna dump this in here. And at this point I'm gonna turn my heat off and I'm gonna just kind of get this mixed in here the best I can and just let that spinach kind of wilt down. Okay, that is looking done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out a serving and show you what that is. All right, that is a serving right there. It says it makes eight one cup or generous one cup servings. So that's about a cup right there. And as I said, with a couple of changes that I made to it, this is coming in at seven points for that serving on all three colors. But again, if you make it according to the recipe that I uh, followed here, it's gonna be 10 points a serving on all three colors. But it looks good, it smells delicious. Let's see what my husband thinks of this. I keep making all this pumpkin stuff and he doesn't like pumpkin, but. Try to take me out. I try to take him out with the light. <laughs> Get some in your beard, as usual. Yeah, so that's really good. I mean, the kielbasa is really uh, prevalent, you know, the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, did you put salt in it? I did salt it. I followed the, uh, is it too salty now? Yeah. yeah, I wondered about that. Because of the kielbasa. Well, yeah, and it's got the chicken broth in there too, which also has salt, so. Yeah, so I would recommend not doing that, but it's, you know, it's very, uh, you know, thick and creamy. From the pumpkin, yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, the tortellini, is that what that's called? Yep, tortellini. That's really good. And then uh, you can actually taste the uh, spinach pretty well. And I'm, you know, I like spinach. I think overall it's a really good dish. So yay? 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, tonight I am doing shepherd's pie. One of our favorites, especially during the fall. So over here, I've got some potatoes. It's two large potatoes that I'm going to steam up. And then over here, I am going to start cooking up some turkey. Pound of lean ground turkey. And to that, I'm gonna add a large onion. And I'm gonna just cook the two of these until the turkey is browned and the onions are softened. I'm also gonna add a little fresh ground pepper to this too. While it's cooking. All right, now that my meats and onions are cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some seasoning to this. Do a little thyme, about a teaspoon worth, and a little bit of rosemary, also about a teaspoon worth. Stir that in there. And then I'm gonna add in some flour. Stir that in. And now some chicken broth. And at this point, I'm gonna turn up my heat a little bit. I've had it on medium. I'm gonna turn it up a little bit and get this to start simmering. And while that's doing that, I'm going to work on my potatoes, which are steamed here. I've got them fork tender, so those are ready to go. So I'm gonna drain those and then I'll show you what I do with those. So I've got my potatoes drained, so now what I'm gonna do to them is, I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of this Rumble and Brown. And then a quarter cup of not that Greek yogurt. A little brown pepper. And a little bit of salt. And you just wanna do that to taste. And then I'm gonna just mash these up. I've let this simmer for a little bit. Now I'm gonna add, and it's thickened up. That is the point of that. So now I'm gonna add in some frozen mixed vegetables. And stir those in there. And at this point I'm gonna turn the heat down on this to low. I've got a nine by nine inch casserole dish here. I'm gonna take my meat mixture and I'm gonna just pour it into this casserole dish. Move that out. And while you're doing all this, you want your oven to be preheating to 350. And now I'm gonna take my potatoes here and I'm gonna just smooth them on the top of this the best I can. And this is a little tricky because they like to kind of sink down in there. But I'll just do the best I can. All right, I've got that all smoothed in there. Now I'm gonna bake this at 350 for 30 minutes. Okay, this is done. I cooked it for just over 30 minutes. And um, now I'm gonna let it cool and then I will cut out a serving size to show you what that is. All right, I've got a serving of this out and that is a sixth of that casserole or shepherd's pie. And the points on this for the green is seven a serving. For the blue, it's five a serving. And for the purple, it is only three a serving. But this stuff is so good. I think I typically really only make this during the fall and winter. Um, but yeah, definitely one of our favorites. And that was what we had for dinner this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and maybe it gave you guys some ideas for yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.